Hi and welcome to this tutorial from sounds.com. My name's Paul Nolan for Make Your Transition and today we're going to be looking at some classic house samples which have been given to us by legendary imprint Strictly Rhythm. So if you've ever wanted to get your hands on classic samples from tracks including Armin van Helden, Hard Drive and Dennis Ferrer, then these are gonna be the packs and sounds for you. So we're gonna dive in right now and look at making a more contemporary tech house production using these classic samples. While we're here, it's well worth mentioning that Sounds.com has now launched in 21 countries, including the UK, the US and Canada, Australia, and most of the Eurozone. We have a free two week trial for you to start with, with 75 credits included, and three brand new usage plans to make sure that you get everything you need from Sounds.com. Okay, so we're in Ableton Live 10 now, and what you can see on the browser on the left-hand side here is that I've already added the five packs, volumes one to five, of the Strictly Rhythm packs that are available on sounds.com. So how I've done that very quickly is that I've loaded them up onto my computer's hard drive here, and it's a simple case of just dragging and dropping into the browser as you've seen me do there already. So nice and easy. Now, if we just dig in to each individual volume here, you can see we get a lovely selection of synths, kicks, really wicked bass sounds, and a variety of different drum sounds from this amazing, iconic Strictly Rhythm Back catalog. So, they are really good to go to be dragged and dropped into Ableton or your DAW of choice and be able to construct amazing drum kits from these amazing samples. So I've got a drum group here in the session view and you can see here I've got a drum rack and I have literally just done that. I have gone through all five of the different releases here. As you'll see as well, just to note, volume five is also... Just synth sounds. Beautiful. So you've got those at your disposal as well. So what I've done here is I've used a combination of one or two samples that I've found in Ableton's own inbuilt library, which is the Ride 909, just to give it an extra lift. And then on top of that, everything else on this drum rack is completely and utterly from the Strictly Rhythm Packs. So I'm just gonna play the drums on their own and we're just gonna build into these other channels that we've got here. And it's worth spending some time on how I've constructed this drum groove here. So let's just have a listen. So as you can hear, we've got a really great driving, quite modern sounding tech house record, but using all of these iconic samples. And what I love about these samples is they've got, they've got like a richness to them and a, a, a noisiness to them as well. They've definitely been translated into this form with some of their sort of vintage iconic sounds and the, the character of those sounds still intact. So... How I've constructed this is I have obviously a kick here and I actually construct all of my drum racks in exactly the same way where I'll have the kick on the same pa panel or on the same pad each time, I should say. And yeah, it gives me the ability through the drum rack macros as you'll see here, if I just solo the kick on its own. And again, you can just hear some of that noise and there's like a little remnant of a hi-hat that I've just left in. Just put a little fade out there. Let me just take that off so you can hear it completely. So you can just tame that a little bit, but it just gives an extra little bit of movement and an extra bit of groove. From here, I've assigned the filter of this high pass on an auto filter and the transpose and the pitch of the kick to two separate macros on the drum rack macros here. So it means that I can very easily automate. I 
as a little pro tip of just seeing me put the warp engine on here if you do have these kicks with like little remnants on like a little hi-hat on it's worth warping them just to keep them within that one beat structure because as you heard it went slightly out of time there because you've got more than one hit to think about so the kick's got a lot of maneuverability and a lot of control on it and the rest of the kit does as well so let's listen to each sound individually it's a really nice clap there nice and simple keeping it nice and crisp And this hi-hat here is beautiful because it's got a little remnant of a vocal over the top of it, which does give a hell of a lot of character. And as you can see here, I'm delaying that slightly by 3 sixteenths on the left side of a simple delay and 1 sixteenth note on the right-hand side with a little bit of feedback, not too much, around 25% max, and just dialing it in slightly. And you can see if I go back to the main rack here, I've actually got it map to a macro so I can just dial that in whenever I like and again a great more acoustic sound and hi-hat with a lot of side chaining going on as well just to give it that bump sometimes I like to use volume shapers and envelopers like say for example Ableton's own shaper at Max for Live or a plugin specific for doing the automatic sidechain and like LFO tool or kickstart but in this case I actually want to use sidechain compression because I want to really give it that old school vintage kind of pumping sound so that's why I'm using a glue compressor and I've set up a sidechain kick as well so going to next hi-hat which is from Armin van Helden Witch Doctor And again, another one with that simple delay trick on just to give it an extra bit of rhythm and an extra bit of groove. And I'll just take off the high pass filter here so you can just hear how, you know, rough and how unrefined some of these samples are, which actually is an amazing thing because you can then choose how rough you want it, whether you want it scraped off a little bit on the low end just to clean it up because the low end is so large on this with the kick and everything and the bass that's to come. So yeah, let's have a listen. So yeah, in some cases, you'll get almost like the back end of a kick involved because the kicks in a lot of these Strictly Rhythm records were so huge and so big. They were almost like a kick and a bass line in themselves. So yeah, moving forward. Little sub kind of like snare there. And again, little off snares again. Just to give it a bit of a jacking movement, you know? Again, another lovely symbol, which I've actually programmed in, you can hear on an eighth note, with a nice amount of side changes to give an extra bit of movement. A little finger snap, just to layer on top of the clap, which we can bring back in. And again, actually using another little kick there just to add a little bit of extra bump and movement. So again, just a Ride 909. Again, as I said, that's from Ableton's own package of samples, which comes with Ableton Live. And a lovely dubby sound here, which again, I've put an echo on with just about 30%. Quite a lot of feedback. And again, what you can see here as we're getting towards the end, we've actually got some sends on here, which are going to really come into play as I sort of show you the rest of the functionality of the rack. So this one here is like a, an ending kind of sound. So if we play the rack in its entirety. So you can hear right there that we've actually got a reverb that is built in onto the drum rack itself. So I've been able to set that up by going into the chains view and you can see here with the chains view, I've just added an extra little set of controls, input, output, send and return. 
So if you click return, you can then drag and drop audio effects here. Now, this is like my kind of stock reverb that I use on a lot of channels. It's a very big, very washy reverb, which is more like a riser than anything else. So that's why it's got that really big sort of diffused sound. Now, what I've also got the ability to do, if I go back to the main rack, is that I've got a reverb here. And what you'll see is, is that every single control here is actually moving every send is actually moving with the control of one macro. This is because, for those of you who don't realize, in Ableton you can actually map multiple parameters to one macro, which opens up a whole new world of control and makes automation an absolute breeze. So this reverb that is internal to the drum rack can be saved with this drum rack. And again, you could save these drum racks into your own custom library and be able to come back to them again and again. This is the power of using drum racks once you've got a set of samples that you really like together. And again, the demixing of the drum rack into individual channels makes it incredibly powerful. So it means I've got everything here and I can, in a production context, as I'm arranging a track, I could actually automate these controls. Everything comes very, very simple on these four controls. So let's have a listen. So it's great for doing rises and doing build-ups and tracks. And the only other thing I've got in the drums here is just a simple little tambourine loop with, again, just a little bit, actually no side chaining on at all. And that just gives it an extra little bit of movement. So now we've got the drums down. Let's move on and look at the bass. So moving on to the bass line, I've maneuvered into volume one of the Strictly Rhythm releases here, and I have found an amazing bass sample from a track called Deep Inside, which you'll probably know very well. And it's got that really lovely, resonant, low-end, beautiful sort of FM style, but again, with just a little bit of that character and static and noise added in, that just has that you know beautiful kind of kind of vintage feel. So what I've done here is I've loaded the sample into a simpler, added a low pass filter, which I've then added some drive to in the MS2 mode to give it an extra bit of warmth, and just a final bit of bump and you know pumping from a glue compressor on some sidechain compression. So. I've replayed the pattern and therefore changed the pitch of the sample, which is giving it a real nice groove and a really nice chugging quality. So let's have a quick listen to this. So yeah, just a really simple two note bass, which a lot of these records tend to have. And if I add in the full drum groove, as you'll be able to hear, it really, really complements the drum groove. So yeah, really simple, just again, a really high quality sample there. And yeah, just a phenomenal way to very quickly get a great baseline going. So let's look at some final synths before we wrap up. So we've got two main synth lines here to finish off the track. And with the addition of the bass and the drum groove, we've got enough here to start arranging a really solid production. This first one is a synth stab that I've found in volume one, which has got really nice quality to it. So again, I've dragged and dropped that into a simpler. And this time I've added an auto filter, which will give me the ability to just introduce that into a track very, very gradually off the filter. So as you can hear, I've played it in at a different pitch and used send B. If I go to return B here, I've got an echo just on dotted eighth notes, nice and simple, about 72% feedback. And again, it just adds 
another level of musicality and complexity to that very simple kind of synth line. So finally, we have the main sort of synth line here. So again, I'm just gonna play this in isolation and explain what I've done. So you can hear there's quite a lot going on there. Now, again, it's another sample from that string track. Again, another absolutely iconic record. And it's just a fantastic sound, really amazing, iconic, almost like Detroit, Chicago style synth stab that automatically makes it quite on point trend wise for 2018, but has also got this timeless quality to it. So again, just a little bit of sending off to the echo that I've got on Return B and just a little extra here. I've just played a, a nice little pattern in. And again, you can hear that I've not really used them at original pitches. They're all over the place, which changes the character, but allows them to interlock. That's a really important point. So I've just played in a nice little groove here, a nice little melodic thing that will complement everything else. Everything's in key. And then I've just used from the creative extensions in Live 10, which if you have Live Suite with Max for Live, this is an absolute must. This little device called a pitch hack, which means I've got little flutters going on at an octave above, which just adds again another level of complexity. So if I just turn the send off here, and we just hear it roar. So it just adds some, almost like a kind of a delayed, pitched kind of vibe to the riff and just adding again that little layer of texture and complexity. So again, just dry and wet in about 30%, not too overwhelming. Again, an auto filter to allow for gradual introduction. And again, from the creative extensions, I've used a color limiter and I'm using about a third on the saturation, not really using any loudness. I'm just using it to change the tone a little bit. This is another fantastic little tool that you can use. So again, I've got everything I need now and I can roll the filter down on both of these, fire off the scene and away we go. So there you have it. We've just, in you know, quite a, a short amount of time, got a really good sounding basis for a quite contemporary, but yet quite vintage tech house record using some of these fantastic samples from Strictly Rhythm. So go to sounds.com, get downloading them, get using them in your productions, and I look forward to hearing what you do with them. I've been Paul Nolan for Make Your Transition and for sounds.com. Hope you've enjoyed the tutorial. See you soon.